The internet is inherently a publicly open space. Whenever you surf a website or use an app, you're living on someone else's computer, and whoever owns that computer knows who you are, what you do, and where you are coming from. Internet is just a network of someone's computers, so the only way to keep your privacy in public is to be anonymous. Tor, which stands for the Onion Router, is designed to give all of its users the same identity. It's as if a crowd of people in the streets all wear the same clothes and the same masks. Tor is the best tool available today to stay anonymous on the web. On the internet, your true location is always revealed to all computers you are connecting to, which can be up to thousands a day. Tor hides your location by relaying your traffic through three random places in the world and encrypting your traffic with triple layered encryption to make sure nobody can follow your Tor circuit back to its origin. Tor is essentially a traffic analysis resistance tool. It doesn't prevent data collection. It makes it so that whatever data is collected can't be meaningfully deciphered and utilized for whatever purpose, i.e. by law enforcement or advertisers. You should use Tor for about 90 to 100% of your internet activities. That is, everything that doesn't need a personal account and where providers don't block connections coming from the Tor network, like banking or some streaming services. To start using Tor, there is no better place than the Tor browser. In this tutorial, we'll also step up our security with Hunix Virtual Machine, and I'll teach you how to set up a live Tails operating system on a USB flash drive. Let's begin. Download Tor Browser straight from torproject.org, Google Play Store, or FDroid. Unfortunately, iOS users can't get the official Tor Browser on iPhones, but the unofficial Onion Browser can be used instead. On desktop, you can run Tor Browser from your local or external storage, like USB disks, SD cards, or external drives. When you first launch it, it will ask you for some basic configuration. You should go for default settings for everything. If Tor is blocked in your country, select a Tor bridge, which is going to hide the fact you are using Tor from your internet service provider or the government. Tor browser will then automatically start connection to the Tor network. If it is successful, the browser homepage should be signature violet or give you a text like, this browser is configured to use Tor. If Tor connection failed to establish, the homepage will be red, or will tell you something like not to use the current session. In that case, just restart the browser and you should reconnect to the Tor network correctly. By default, Tor browser is gonna function in its most user-friendly form. To avoid scaring away novice users, the browser doesn't block JavaScript, phones, or any type of media. But to expect reasonable privacy, security, and anonymity, you have to block JavaScript. The only way you should do this is to change the security level to safer or the safest mode. It is highly recommended against changing Tor browser settings in other unofficial ways. The safer level disables non-encrypted JavaScript and some fonts, while media is click to play. The safest level disables all JavaScript, fonts, and media. I use Tor in the safest mode at all times. Only in rare circumstances do I let it run JavaScript, because I can never verify if code on any website is malicious or not. In the safest security level, you can manually change what JavaScript is allowed to run and which one remains blocked. This is done through the NoScript extension. If you can't see the add-in in the top bar, open the menu and select Customize. Then Find the icon for NoScript as well as HTTPS Everywhere and drag them over to the top right bar and click Done. When you want to re-enable individual JavaScripts to run on a website, open NoScript menu. This will display a list of all available domains trying to make a connection on the website. In the safest security mode, they are all blocked by default. To unblock them, set them to Trusted by clicking on the blue S icon next to each domain you want to enable. For as long as you don't close or restart Tor browser, JavaScript of these domains will be allowed. For click-to-play media, all you need to do is to click on the NoScript overlay and just allow whatever media there is to play. This needs to be done individually for audio and video. You may notice the little brush icon in the top right bar. If you click that, it will refresh Tor browser and give you a new identity. 
This just means it will clear all browser data, like history, cookies, and cache. Tor Browser automatically clears all of its data when you close it, so you don't have to click on this brush icon to do it. But the benefit of refreshing your identity instead of restarting your whole browser is that any individual changes you made in NoScript during your session will be remembered. Whereas if you close and restart the browser entirely, it will give you a new session and all changes in what domains are allowed and blocked in NoScript will be wiped. Another add-in to Node is HTTPS Everywhere. If you leave it as it is, it will try to force all websites to use encrypted connections instead of going through non-secure HTTP protocol. But in 2020, I don't want to visit any website that isn't encrypted. So I set my HTTPS everywhere to block all unencrypted connections. When you visit an unencrypted website with this setting enabled, HTTPS everywhere will block it and give you an option to enable unencrypted connection manually. This is a far more secure method than allowing non-secured connections to run automatically. The last noteworthy function of Tor Browser is the Tor Circuit button. Click on the lock icon in the URL bar to display the list of relays in your Tor Circuit. Sometimes your circuit may be too slow, or you may want to change your exit node. Tor changes your circuit automatically for each website and each time you refresh or restart the browser but you can also manually request a new circuit for a specific website. This can sometimes solve the annoying problem of some websites that default to the language of your exit location. Now, Tor is just a tool. It can only do as much as the piece of the monkey meat that's using it. It's just as important to have excellent OPSEC if you want to make the most out of Tor anonymity. OPSEC stands for Operation Security. And it's basically managing your behavior in ways that do not compromise your security strategy and toolset. There are a number of rules that can be broken when using Tor. Here is a few of the most important ones. Rule number zero. Do not use accounts with your real identity. The more general advice is not to use accounts on Tor at all, because accounts are data points that can create links over long enough periods of time. However, you can have anonymous accounts that do not link to anything in your real life. That means no phone numbers, real name email addresses, or emails that were registered with your real IP address. If you create a fake pseudonym on Tor, and then use or even mention that pseudonym anywhere outside of Tor, you are compromised. Rule number one. Do not change any settings, install add-ins, or plugins. Never go full screen either, as this can identify your device. Only the advanced security settings are okay to change, but making any other changes to your browser, including installing extensions and plugins, is like putting a giant stick on the forehead of your anonymous mask. It makes you stand out from the crowd, so don't. Rule number two. Do not disclose any personally identifiable information. Anything personal like your hobbies, location, profession, pets, family members, photos, screenshots, or nicknames in your posts, searches, or account names can link back to you. If you want to be anonymous, do not discuss private data with people that you don't want them to know about. Rule number three, use end-to-end -end encryption. Tor is a great tool, but not a magic one. The three-layered encryption of Tor is only there to prevent individual relays from knowing your original and final destination. But when your connection leaves the exit node and the destination website isn't encrypted, then the exit node can know what you're doing even if they don't know your original IP address. All websites you visit, clear net or onion ones, should be encrypted. If the lock next to the URL bar is green, you're good. If it isn't, you're screwed. Also, make sure you can trust or verify that the encryption on the server itself isn't compromised. Rule number four, be knowledgeable about surveillance capabilities. I can't remotely go over even just a fraction of what's possible in this video, but let me give you one very common yet creepy example. A Google script on your phone can constantly signal inaudible sounds that can be picked up by your computer's microphone. If a website runs a script that can access your microphone, that website can link your Tor browser session to your phone ID. If you run two scripts of the same provider, one over Tor and one over ClearNet, then your anonymous session can be easily linked to your real identity. 
if you watch a phone review on the YouTube app and then launch the Tor browser to search for that phone on Google, then Google can almost definitely link these two activities together. Especially if you're running JavaScript, advanced trackers on the web, like Google, can do all the nasty tricks to link your activities to your real-life identity. So remember to compartmentalize what you do and whose services you decide to go for. If you make a connection to the same provider anonymously and non-anonymously at the same time, you're screwed. To avoid these pitfalls, it's best not to do anything else when using Tor. Rule number 5. Tor is only as secure as your machine's hardware and operating system. It can protect you if your device is already compromised. This is not a limitation of Tor. This is a limitation of being alive. If there is a malware with root privileges or remote administration on your phone or laptop, then no tool can save you. It's your responsibility to make sure you are adjusting your security level based on the system you're using. With all that being said, there are more secure ways to run Tor, and that's when your whole system is routing your connection through the Tor network to prevent any leaks. There are two ways to go about this, a convenient one and an amnesic one. But we're gonna cover that in a separate video because I figured it'd be better to leave two full-featured anonymous operating systems its own space. If you want to support this project in return for these essential skills, I welcome you to join my Patreon. If you prefer to keep your anonymity, maybe my Bitcoin or Monero addresses in the description can be an option. Thank you very much for your support and stay free.